The challenge that we have, I think, is trying to partner with parents to make sure we're all on the same page as we're moving forward. I think it's more important than ever. When it comes to student safety, we have to be on the same page. Otherwise, we're always going to be a couple steps behind our kids. You're listening to the SmartSocial.com podcast. This is our district talk segment where we interview district leaders to learn how they're keeping students safe on social media. And we also ask them questions that we get from parents all over the country in our program. Now let's get back to the interview. I'm John Thompson, the superintendent of the New Haven Unified School District. We are in Southern Central Alameda County, and we have about 10,000 students spread across 13 schools. Hey, I'm Josh Truman. I serve as the Vice President of Cognity, and we are a very proud partner of New Haven School District and really excited to be here for the conversation. Welcome to both of you. It's so good to have you, and especially to our amazing listeners nationwide. Now, you're either a parent, a superintendent, or anything in between, and we are rooting for you. Here at Smart Social, we keep students safe on social media so they're successful in the walls of the school and in the walls of your house at home. So that means they're learning. They're becoming resilient. They're becoming well-behaved using these new digital tools. And the third thing that we're doing is to help them someday shine online to get that dream job, career, and everything else using a positive portfolio online. And we call it, in a positive way, keeping it light, bright, and polite. All right, so I'm excited to interview two awesome people here. This is about our 200th episode with a superintendent in it. I brought in my friend Josh Truman because they have an interesting new partnership that's quite interesting. Josh, I want to ask you first, Tell us a little bit about this partnership and what's happening and what your company is doing with the school district. Absolutely. One of the things that we are mainly focused on in science education is having an impact. And we know that impacting students means that we need to serve teachers better. And through a partnership like we have with New Haven, we're really focusing on providing a really strong tech forward digital platform that meets the standards, meets the NGSS standards. But at the same time, we know we need to support teachers as they really try to upskill themselves and continue to be better practitioners. That's our goal. Yeah. Superintendent, walk us through what does success look like with this program? One of the challenges we have right now is the science instruction is doesn't necessarily align with the NGSS standards. The, the standards are complicated. The textbooks don't really follow. They follow the NGSS standards, but they don't provide teachers with good strategies for how to prepare students to become competent in these standards. So success for me with Cognity looks like our teachers getting great professional development and that translates into good NGSS aligned instruction in the classroom for our students. And they should be able to, if we have that, demonstrate competency on the standards that they're charged with learning. Yeah, that's exciting. So it sounds like there's a lot of teacher training and it all benefits down to the students. Josh, the question for you, you know, one of the biggest questions I've got is give me a practical and tactical example of what are some of the students learning in this program? Absolutely. As John mentioned, the NGSS standards are challenging, not only for teachers, but really challenging for students. So we want to make sure that those standards are at their fingertips, right? And we want to make sure that science is engaging and, and activates their brains and gets them curious about science and the world around them. And that's what we do on our platform is we bring it to life for kids. For all of our listeners right now, you know that Smart Social is all about engaging kids to be safe online and also in the classroom. So I'm excited to chat with you a little bit more about your partnership. But first, I want to talk about what Smart Social does to keep kids safe in the classroom and also learning in this digital world. So, Superintendent, I've got a question for you. After a couple hundred of other conversations with your peers, other superintendents in 39 other states, we've heard a consistent trend. We're hearing that students are growing up in a digital world filled with powerful technology, AI, and social media, but they're lacking sometimes, maybe not in your community, superintendent, but sometimes the maturity and guidance to use these tools safely. The result is more student absences, sometimes lower focus, rising cyberbullying, declining self-esteem, sometimes AI misuse in the classroom. My question for you is, Parents are trying to raise these great kids and they love them in a world that maybe they didn't grow up in. A world where when we were kids, perhaps technology is now moving faster than safety policies and teens know how to hide apps and online behavior and safety lessons usually come after a crisis. Let's put on the safety hat, Superintendent, for just a minute, if you don't mind. Are there any other trends on this topic that you've seen, whether they're on campus or off campus, so we can alert other districts before they see them? I think you hit the big, the general topics that are concerning as it relates to safety. 
the challenge that we have, I think, is trying to partner with parents to make sure we're all on the same page as we're moving forward. We do a lot on our end to between filters and how what students access during the school day and trying to find different ways to limit that, but working with parents and through parent workshops, through collaboration on a variety of different ways is really a challenge. And I think it's more important than ever when it comes to student safety, we have to be on the same page. Otherwise, we're always going to be a couple steps behind our kids. Yeah, so true. So true. Now, for all of our listeners and viewers right now all over the country, one of the biggest things that we try and do is listen to real teens. Now, parents are asking us all the time, hey, Josh, what advice would you give a student to help them recognize some of the red flags of a dangerous stranger online? Now, this topic, this episode is all over. We're working with Josh Truman's organization to help push STEM education in the classroom, but you can't just do one thing without protecting a kid everywhere, right? And so this topic, we've asked real students, and here's one of the answers. Let's hear from a real student about how she might help her friend recognize red flags. And if we can keep kids safe online, then they're a little bit better and able to learn in the classroom. If I had a friend talking online to a stranger, I think that I would feel a little bit uncomfortable with the whole situation. I would advise against it because so many indirect issues can come from that and it could cause something to be worse than if they had just unadded them in the first place. Some red flags that I would have to advise them to cut it off with this person or to stop engaging would be if the person starts to get very involved in their personal life and they seem to be very intrigued in what's going on with them and wanting to know all little details about what they do and who they are and just very personal details and things that you wouldn't normally share with a stranger in real life if they're very persistent and constantly wanting to talk to my friend or constantly trying to be involved in their life or wanting to speak to them i feel like that's kind of a red flag another thing would be if they ask them to ever meet them anywhere in person right from the start if they feel a sense of being uncomfortable or their intuition is just saying it's wrong, or if my intuition is saying something feels wrong with this, then I think that's a major red flag. Now, remember, parents and listeners, if your school district is a partner, we host weekly live parent events live from Los Angeles that you can join in on. We give away Kindles, Bluetooth speakers, 3D printers. Come to our 45-minute amazing event, and it highlights real teen video lessons. So a lot of parents bring their teens to learn about these amazing topics to keep their kids safe. There's also a premium parent newsletter. We've got August is AI for student success, September, how all these video apps keep kids watching. October is combating online bullying, perhaps the biggest anti-bullying program in the world because we have school districts from almost every single state contributing live to our events and then all year long. All right, we're back to the program. I want to ask the superintendent one more question, and I want to get some feedback from Josh. Superintendent, as a result of all these conversations we're having with some of your peers, we've heard from communities, and again, you might have the perfect community, superintendent. You might have little angels running around in your campus, little students, and that's great. But many parents are feeling overwhelmed trying to keep up with these fast-moving online trends and the digital safety risks as well. Some students are finding ways to increase their screen time and bend the rules, especially when expectations at school or around the summer significantly differ from those at home. And what trends or pain points are you seeing when it comes to parent engagement, superintendent? And where do you feel families might be struggling, especially going back to the summer, the most to stay informed or connected? Wow. Yeah, a lot to talk about there. I think if you're starting with the last part of it first, one of the things that I would encourage parents to do is to try to, I think we do, and this is not, I didn't come up with this. This is something that, that you, I'm sure, have discussed, but the idea that we do a great job of protecting our kids from things from the outside, but we do a terrible job, really, compared to how far along our kids are, of protecting our kids from the things on the inside, the social media and all of that. And if you can, as a parent, find ways to maybe free up a little bit of that outside access in, in a trade-off with your kids for limiting some of the internal access, the social media content. I think that's a great strategy for summer. And that's something, you know, you have to, depending on how old your kids are, that could look like a variety of different things. A trend that I think is here now, but is going to get worse and something that we're going to have to partner with our parents on. And the young lady that you had that spoke on this video really hits at it is, we are going to be using more and more AI-related tutoring sources. AI related interactions that might look like real interactions with a person. So how do we help our kids and help our parents understand what's okay 
For example, if we have an AI tutor and we're starting that next year in grades you know, K through two to have kids have their own individual AI related tutor, how do you help a young child in the elementary school differentiate between what's okay at school, hearing that conversation with a, an AI related tutor source versus what they might be accessing online at home because it might sound similar. So when it comes to partnership, I think this is a trend we're going to have to tackle head on. And again, something we're really going to have to work with parents on to give them strategies to help them help their students differentiate between what's okay and what's not. Absolutely. It's so true. You know, I want to dive back over to Josh. Josh, why is it so important for Cognity to do this in California right now, especially in the superintendent school district? That's a great question, Josh. And honestly, it really comes down to what's coming over the next year. And that is science scores being reported on the state dashboard. And it's kind of opened all of our eyes to understand that change is needed. And that change isn't really with the kids. It's, it's a change with the adults. And how do we help adults meet the kids where they're at and really engage them differently in science? And by doing that, by helping teachers teach better, change their pedagogy, reach the NGSS standards as they are intended to be, to be reached, it's going to unlock learning for students that is going to be applicable to real life, which is really important. Yeah, absolutely. John, what are your thoughts on this? Well, I think Josh nailed it. I mean, really, and I hate the idea that we're teaching to a test. That's not what I believe at all. The test is a reflection of whether or not our kids have mastered those standards. So we, it's going to be a reckoning next year in California when, those, when our science course come out, because I can speak for our district, and I think I speak for others when I say that our teachers, are, that stru- instruction right now is not aligned perfectly with the NGSS standards. And so we're trying to get ahead of it with Cognitive to really help prepare our teachers to help our students master those standards. And then again, that should be reflected down the line in better test results if they are able to demonstrate that mastery. Yeah, so well said. It's an exciting time, but it's also scary at the same time. We're excited what you two are doing together. And we definitely want to have you back to see how this turns out because I'm excited about the benefit to the kiddos. Josh Truman, I'd like you to finalize and tell us a little bit more. What's the future for this program? And what would you say that other district superintendents should look out for when they're trying to bring that in-classroom, less screen time, more experiential learning on your topic to the forefront of kids? That's another great question. And honestly, you know, even though we are a digital first product, we are very keen on getting kids off devices, right? We want science is hands-on. Science is really digging in and becoming a scientist as a student. And that's what what our goal is. And we help, for instance, labs come alive. We obviously have an online portion to that, but we really want them to have their hands in the science so it does come alive. They can be engaged in it. And and one of the things that we're really focused on over the next several years at Cognity is, and really right now we're digging into this all the way across the organization, is how do we implement artificial intelligence in all that we do so we can contextualize learning. We can create less time taken from teaching for teachers and more with the students. So I think there's some exciting things to come for Cognity. And I, I would just say, keep an eye on us because we're, we're doing some really fantastic work. Super exciting. Hey, thank you to both of you gentlemen for taking the time out today. Yeah, this has been great. Josh, it's been a blast. Really appreciate it. Thank you. To all of our listeners, remember we here at Smart Social want to keep the kiddos safe so they can someday shine online. Right in that middle there, that's where Cognity sits. That's where the superintendent's at. We want to make them successful in the walls of your home. By the way, they're at your house so much And they're also in the walls of the school who loves you, supports you. Remember to keep that rich dialogue open for your kids. The number one safety app in the world is that relationship you, the trusted adult, has with your kiddos. It's not Facebook. It's not Microsoft. It's not Google. It's you with your kid, a trusted adult. And we hope that you'll spend that time asking them open-ended questions and using AI with them, looking over their shoulder on their devices and learning with them. What did you learn at school today? Maybe have some iterative versions of that so that you can pull out what they're learning in STEM education. Parents, we love what you're doing. We're big fans of yours. We wanna support you. And also remember whatever you're posting parents, remember to keep it light, bright and polite because your kids are watching what you're doing online. I'm Josh Oaks, the founder of smartsocial.com. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next episode. Have a great rest of the day. Thanks for listening to the smartsocial.com podcast. Smart Social helps parents understand technology and social media to keep their kids safe and successful. Be sure to join one of our weekly online live events to become the smartest parent on the block so you can keep your kids safe and protect their future. Also, don't miss our 450 plus online resources and replays you can watch on demand in multiple languages. 
Are you a school district wanting to unlock these resources for your parents? Reach out to us so we can protect your whole community each week. Have a great rest of the day and we'll see you on the next episode.